I really can't believe that I'm saying this on my channel, but today we're gonna to talk about minimalism. I tend to have a very maximal, artsy, and busy style with my bullet journaling, but I know a lot of people out there prefer very simple, toned down, and minimal spreads. For the sake of multiple reasons, it could be, you know, it takes less time, less energy, maybe you're not a very artsy person, maybe you just are using a bullet journal to get your thoughts down, whatever it may be. But today I'm gonna to make a quick bullet journal setup in my journal for January 2024 that you guys can take inspiration from if you prefer more minimal themes. Before we get into the actual journal spreads themselves, however, I do want to talk about stationery because I feel like a lot of people kind of lean towards minimalism because they necessarily don't have the tools to make crazy artsy spreads. I'm always a firm believer that you can start a bullet journal with just a notebook and a pen, whether that's a lined notebook, a gridded notebook, just a ballpoint pen, it doesn't matter. To prove my point, I'm going to make these spreads with only a ballpoint pen and a highlighter. That's it. I'm so grateful to Rytech for sending me this huge stack of pen collections that I wanted to test with you guys today. So thank you to Rytech for sponsoring this video because these are ballpoint pens mostly and just really inexpensive pens that you can grab if you want to start bullet journaling and just really want to start with the basics. I'm going to do a pen test for all of these, but I want to do an unboxing first. So this is the Pearly Up gel pens. They are five millimeters. All of these pens are super, super pretty and they have the tips that correlate with the color ink it is. So we have a nice rainbow and then there's also a black pen as well. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my bullet journal so we can do a quick pen test. Here's a swatch of all the Pearly Up gel pens. I love the color variation and all of them are also super fine with an 05 nib and they write super smoothly. So I think these are great for stocking up your stationary collection. Next, there's this three set of seven millimeter bullet pens. So there are three colors, black, blue, and red. And also what's nice is in the box, they also come with refills of each ink. Here are the up gel flash pens. They come in less range of colors, but I love how the box does come with refills so that if you run out of ink, you can use the same pen again. And it also has 07 nibs, so it's a little wider. And I think these are actually perfect for like taking notes in class as well. Next, so these two are both sets that are color coordinated, and these are actually perfect for bullet journal because they literally have uh, different types of pens in the same colorway that can be used for a bullet journal theme. So this one is all in brown tones. As you can see, there are a lot of different pen options here. So we have like ballpoint pens in size 07. This is a ballpoint in size 05. I love the little gradient on this. That's super pretty. And then this one I believe is actually brown ink, not black ink. And then these two are actually highlighters. So this is a light yellowy beige. And then this is light brown, that's super pretty. Here's the Twilight Desert one. This has to be my favorite pack just because I love brown and so I like the brown fine liners because you don't usually see that very often. And also the ink is super nice and the last little skinny black is super, super fine if you wanna go really minimal and get super fine lines in your designs. Wow, that rhymed. <laughs> Lastly, this one actually comes with its own pencil bag, which is kind of fun. These are basically the same thing, but in shades of green and blue, like teals. We have dual tipped brush pens so this one has a brush pen nib on one side and a fine tip on the other. And there's the same thing in this greenish color. So every one of these pens has a duplicate. And then there's the highlighter again, and there's another one in light blue. And then we have the ballpoint pen, two more dual tipped fine liners. This is a smaller brush nib than the other one. Oh, this one is like super fine and like neon. Same thing in green. And then there is this black fine liner with waterproof pigment. And as you can see, it's a really small nib. This looks like a size 04. I love how this one also includes some dual brush pens. So those are great for bullet journaling if you want to do calligraphy. But also there's, of course, the fine liners, the highlighters in the pretty blue and green colors. This would be great for like an underwater theme. So here's the finished pen test. I think all of these pens are just super nice. I like the quality. You can tell that the ink doesn't skip with any of them, which is nice. And they also come in a range of different sizes. But if I had to choose, I think my favorite is the Twilight Desert. So I'm going to use this pack to make my minimal bullet journal spreads in my journal. All right, let's get into the setup. So like I said, I actually already have a January bullet journal setup that I posted many weeks ago on my channel, but I wanted to make a minimal setup just as an example of some ideas you guys can take inspiration from. So hopefully you guys enjoy this quick little setup. I definitely am not a minimal person at all, but I have been in the bullet journaling world for this is my fifth year now, and I've seen a lot of different setups and I've taken a lot of inspiration from different people with different styles. So I think during the setup, I wanna talk about three different popular themes or 
more pillars of minimal bullet journal setups that I see very often and wanted to try to mimic in this setup. Again, I'm not like a pro at minimalism, but these are just what I've kind of seen. So number one, it's less color. This can be taken many different ways, but I just don't see a lot of colorful minimal setups. I think a lot of people like to do it with just black pens, something you can find lying around the house just to do the bare minimum and set up what's productive more than what's super artsy and colorful, which is totally a vibe. As you guys can see with the setup, I am using a brown highlighter to add a little bit of color to the spreads because that's just, uh, I can't do it guys, I can't do it. <laughs> I love the color and I love the art, but this is also something super easy, whether it's just a random marker, a highlighter, or even if it's not anything at all, just using a black pen or maybe a colored pen or something like that. I just don't see lots of, you know, crazy color palettes and anything super bright, loud, busy. I mean, I guess it is the opposite of minimalism, so that makes sense. Monochromatic themes can also fit into this area, which is using one color, like for example, different shades of brown. That could also be considered minimalism in my opinion. Another thing I see a lot is emphasis on thin and like really skinny, dainty line work, text, that sort of thing. So as you guys can see for the, well not calligraphy, but the lettering on the cover page, I wrote January, but I didn't use calligraphy purposefully because I didn't have a calligraphy pen with me. So I only used normal cursive and then I actually added a little bit of faux calligraphy, which is adding a second line on all of the downstrokes. So it looks like calligraphy, but for all the rest of the headers in the setup, I'm only using a monoline cursive. And I feel like this is very common in very minimal setups. Not necessarily that people don't know how to do calligraphy, but just that people, you know, like to keep things super simple and you don't need to use any fancy pens to just write in cursive. Or you can just do any other font. Literally, you don't even have to write in cursive. It could just be like a skinny handwriting font, maybe just like really tall skinny letters. Maybe it's like a serif font, but you only draw the outlines. Similarly to like the very dainty line thing going on, I see very often like people write very small, maybe like really dainty text, very dainty handwriting. As far as the line art goes, you can see that I'm using a very skinny pen. It's a size 05 and that was deliberate because it's like the line art isn't taking up much space on the page. It's leaving room for everything else. Also, you guys saw on the cover and calendar page, I didn't actually draw the full grid for the calendar. I only drew the horizontal lines to differentiate each week from another, but that was it. I didn't have to draw all of the vertical lines too to make a complete grid because it's about leaving that space and just doing what's necessary to get the point across. Same thing here for the habit tracker page that I'm currently on. I'm going to be drawing little boxes for all of the days in the 30 days of January, or I guess 31, but I'm not drawing like all the different boxes to make a full grid calendar. It's just the outline. It's just something super simple. I think this emphasis on like thin, dainty texts and lines just really circles back to the third pillar I want to talk about, which is negative space and also margins. So I feel like a lot of minimalism is really leaving a lot of negative space, which is the space that you're not drawing and coloring on and letting that do most of the talking for you, which I think is an art style of itself. And I can really appreciate that. As you can see with the habit tracker spread here, I have a lot of negative space. There's a lot of margin space on the side. I think there's like four or five dots coming in before you even hit the habit tracker from the left side of the page and also to the middle of the page. There's also a lot of spaces in between each calendar column. There's space at the top and bottom, like before you even get to the words habit tracker, there are like four dots there as well. And on the right, I have a big box that's going to say goals on it. And there's also a three dot margin around the box as well. So leaving a lot of margin space is like I said, an art style of itself. And I think this is one huge element of minimalism. I mean, you could could technically make this exact same spread and just make sure that all of the lines went to the edge of the page. However, I don't see that as often in the minimal space, so that's why I try to replicate the same style in this setup here. Now, occasionally in my own bullet journal, I have tried to venture into the world of minimalism. From what I can remember, like for example, last August and September, I did kind of minimal setups, not anything like this. I still had, you know, stickers and art and everything, but my line art was very dainty. My titles were very simple. I had, like I said, a lot of negative space, a lot of margin space. I think that personally mostly came about not because I was trying to do something minimal specifically, but because I was in a space of low creative energy. I was in a little bit of a slump, so I didn't want to spend a lot of time you know, fully fleshing out spreads and creating all these crazy artworks and designing and stuff. I just wanted to do the bare minimum to get my video up, to get my bullet journal made so I can get to going and using it because I wasn't in a very creative place. So whether you're going through a slump yourself, maybe you are just not a creative person and you only use bullet journaling for the productivity side. And so you want to make sure that you have your spreads made, but you don't really put any emphasis on art and aesthetics and that kind of stuff. Maybe you just don't have much time to journal. All of these are great reasons for minimalism. I'm sure there are other reasons as well. I'd love to hear down in the comments below 
below if you are more of a minimal or maximal person. You guys know my opinion by now, but I, like I said, can definitely appreciate both sides of the argument. I also do want to pop in here and say that if you do bullet journal because you don't have much time, and that's why I like to do minimal setups, I do have an undated bullet journal that you guys may enjoy, which is a full bullet journal with spreads already set up for you, and all you have to do is fill in the dates and the months yourself, and you can choose to color in the artwork or you cannot, it's all up to you. So I'll have a link for that down below if you're interested. With that being said, this is the final minimal setup. Just a couple pages and I hope you guys really like them. I loved using Rytex pens for this. There was no skipping at all. And also one thing I forgot to mention was I used the eraser pretty quick after drawing and they didn't smear at all. So I love that about them. And I will have a link to Rytex stationery in the description box below along with this code for some money off if you're interested in checking them out. They are a great art company specifically for pens. And I think these are great options to kind of start your stationery collection, especially if you're interested in minimal setups like mine. I don't know if I should really call this video like a challenge for me. It really wasn't. I mean, it's not my actual bullet journal setup. I have a separate one that I'm going to be using, but I just find it hard to actually set up my personal bullet journal very minimally because I always like to add more art and decoration. Personally, it makes me happy, but I 100% understand if people prefer minimalism. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed the spreads that I make. Let me know or tag me if you post any recreations of these spreads. I would love to see them. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more productivity and bullet journal videos from yours truly. I post every single Saturday along with YouTube shorts throughout the week. And with that, check out this video over here on the screen where I did a 2024 reset goal set and planned for the new year. It was super fun. So check out that video and I will see you guys next week.